filling out, filling out the form. You know, first Madison Square Garden, now the form. And he's doing it because the fans just want to see him in the ring, regardless of who he fights against. Tom, obviously. Dante, you... Dante's Boxing Nation. Me and Triple G would be the best competitive middleweight fight that there is. There's no other person that has a chance to beat Triple G like I do. Dante's Boxer Nation, what's going on guys? So that clip I just played for you guys, that was an interview conducted immediately following the Keith Thurman versus Sean Porter fight where Danny Jacobs was talking about his eagerness to get in the ring with Gennady Golovkin. As you guys know by now, it is official, according to Danny Jacobs and Gennady Golovkin, that the fight will take place, Golovkin versus Danny Jacobs, March 18th in Madison Square Garden on pay-per-view. HBO pay-per-view So since you guys heard what Danny Jacobs had to say about a potential fight with Golovkin back then Let me give you his first reaction to the fight actually being a done deal Quote I'm excited about facing Gennady Golovkin and proving I'm the best middleweight in the world On March 18th, I'll be bringing all the belts back to Brooklyn End quote First thing I want to say is credit to both Golovkin and Danny Jacobs for taking this fight because I believe the consensus to many was either Gennady Golovkin or Danny Jacobs was hesitant to take this fight. Despite the fact that Danny Jacobs, he's been knocked out before and some people, they look at that as a reason to crown Danny Jacobs as the underdog in this fight or peg him as the underdog. I mean, now, I for one, I really don't know how significant it is that he's been KO before. Of course, that was a lot earlier in his career. We all know that Manny Pacquiao was knocked out twice earlier in his career, and we know what he became after he got knocked out twice. So, with that all being said, this is a very, very competitive, intriguing fight. I truly believe that if... Danny Jacobs goes in there and he fights Golovkin the way he fought Peter Quillen. Especially if he doesn't get caught with something early because there's a possibility that Golovkin could catch him early and this fight could be over really soon, right? But if this fight goes into the later rounds and Danny Jacobs, he boxes Golovkin the way he boxed Peter Quillen, even though that fight only lasted like, what, two minutes, because, see, the thing with Danny Jacobs is, like I told you guys in my very last video where I was talking about the announcement of this fight, with Danny Jacobs, he could do a little bit of both. Or maybe he could do a lot of both. Danny Jacobs, he has great, he has great ring generalship. He can outbox you. He can box. He can move in the ring. He can fight on the inside. He can do a little bit of both. But Gennady Golovkin, on the other hand, is an extremely accurate puncher and has tremendous power as we know Danny Jacobs being knocked out before and even knocked down that can be looked at as a disadvantage or an advantage for Danny Jacobs depending on Danny Jacobs because it could be an advantage in a sense to where you could basically say to yourself well Danny Jacobs he now knows how it feels to deal with that form of adversity. Getting knocked down and having to come back and still win a fight. Because a lot of fighters don't really know how they're going to react when they're hurt for the first time. We don't really know how Golovkin is going to react when he gets knocked down for the first time. When he gets staggered and he doesn't know where he is, he's buzzed for... The next couple of rounds, we don't really know how he's going to react to that type of danger. So we're going to see that eventually. I don't know if we're going to see it in a Danny Jacobs fight, but Danny Jacobs, he possesses the type of skills and power to bring that out of Gennady Golovkin. So we'll see. We will soon see. But I'll close with saying this. Even though this is 
a good step up in competition for Gennady Golovkin because there's no doubt about it. This is Gennady Golovkin's toughest challenge on paper. For Danny Jacobs, if he wins this fight, this would be huge because he would be slaying the dragon, basically. He would be defeating Goliath. That's how big this win would be for Danny Jacobs, considering the fact that he's going to go into this fight as a nice size underdog. So that's pretty much all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Hi, you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Woo!